And away we go. It's Keith Courage in the Alpha Zones, but you probably already knew that. This is the second time I've tried to record this because I forgot to turn off the dehumidifier the first time. So, here he is. He's, uh, he's got a green shirt. That's something. So yeah, this was for the TurboGrafx-16. It was a launch title, and uh, maybe if they had gone with a different launch title, the system would have sold a little better, but hey, that's just me. So, not too often you see Let's Plays of TurboGrafx-16 games. Right now we're just looking at the different shops. We don't have enough money to actually buy anything, which leads you to wonder why they put that at this point in the game. If we can't actually buy the stuff, this is the first thing we're going to see, it's just being told no all the time. That doesn't seem like particularly good game design to me, but what do I know? I'm just some punky-ass kid. Oh yeah, and those spikes are insta-death. Yay, insta-death. Okay, attempt number two. So, like I was saying, um, this was a launch title, and amongst Turbo Graphics fans, although there aren't very many, the agreement seems to be if they had gone with uh, Blazing Lasers as the launch title instead, perhaps the, the story of the TurboGrafx-16 would be quite different, because this game's a little too clunky for mainstream audiences, and it's not a good demonstration of the system's capabilities in that regard. Not to mention the theming's kind of weird. I mean, Keith Courage? What the heck is that? It's not cool. Apparently this was based on some kind of anime, and the name Keith Courage came from the American team to make it more marketable. Um, they got the name Keith from uh, apparently just some guy who worked on the game. He was like the manager or something like that. I'm not sure what the original anime was called, but I should definitely look that up. I think that would be be quite interesting to look into. It's a part of gaming history in a way. Okay, so that was all just a warm-up, so now we get to do the real stage, eventually. Here we go. Epic transformation sequence! Okay, so the, the real stages function essentially the same to the one before, except now there's no stuff you can buy, and the enemies are more frequent, and the music's more intense, and you, you, your jump height is different. I guess those differences are meaningful enough to constitute calling them separate levels. Yeah, they just throw the enemies right at you. You can take lots of hits though, so it's not too big of a deal. Yes, yeah, so, what was I saying? Yeah, I wanna f <coughs> My voice cracked. I wanna find that anime, I think it would be... Well, there's probably no English translation. You have to watch it with subs, like some kind of chump. Although some people prefer subs to dubs, if you're a, a hardcore enthusiast or something. That blue number we picked up a couple seconds ago, I'm not sure what that does, but I don't think it's overly important for what our goals are here. Just keep moving. Um, so um, earlier, when we switched over to the action, action stage, there was a, a transition where the character got carried off in a rainbow before he transformed into a robot, and uh, that same transition is used by uh, Pat the NES Punk for his flea market videos for whenever Frank shows up. It, Frank does like this Keith Courage type uh, transformation with the same music, and always seemed like an odd choice to me. wonder if Pat even still does those videos. Flea market madness. Always mildly entertaining. All the neat stuff that he would find. His, his name is Pat, and he buys crap every Saturday and Sunday. You know where it's at. Take a guess, it's flea market madness. Or something like that. I haven't actually seen any of them in like three years. Okay, so now we've got the first boss fairly simple in nature. You just gotta... They've got one attack that they do, so... Just gotta dodge that, and you're golden! See? That wasn't too hard. So now we're back to the regular stages. We've almost got enough money that we can buy some meaningful upgrades. And you can also farm gold in these parts by just waiting for the enemies to respawn. That's a good strategy to use. Okay, let's try to get some health back. Uh, 400 gold to get your health back, huh? That's highway robbery! 
when you say no, they give you a warning like, are you sure you don't want your health back? Now we're going to, to upside down land. Don't they call that Australia? <laughs> Alright, I don't even know why they put those spikes down there since the whole idea is that it's upside down. There's no way to actually make contact with the spikes. And they did not think this through when they were designing this. Or maybe they did. Maybe there was just some other reason it's poorly designed. Yeah, you can buy bolt bombs, but I'm not even sure what those do, so we're not going to waste 200 gold on it. We're going to save it for the sword upgrade. I wonder if there was some kind of menu that I wasn't aware of, come to think of it. Because I did buy the sword upgrade, as you'll see in a couple minutes here. But I don't remember it making any meaningful difference in the action stages. So, we'll see... Alright, so we just need 25 more gold, so we're just going to do a little gold farming real quick. It shouldn't take long. There we go. Okay. Give me all you got, Yajirobe from Dragon Ball Z. Alright. Very good. Use it wisely. Please come back in the future. The translation in these old TurboGrafx-16 uh, games is a little rough, quite honestly. But that was normal for most most games back then, RPGs especially. You noticed a lot of the old school RPGs, the dialogue's just not worth anything. And the newer ones have gotten better about that, thankfully. Okay, new action stage, how exciting. So, I was talking about Flea Market Madness earlier. And uh, another thing that I find interesting about that is you can usually spot the resellers you know, like people who professionally sell things at flea markets versus just like the normal people trying to get rid of stuff. And you want to go for the people, the normal people who just want to get rid of stuff because typically they don't know what the pricing is. So you can get things for a lot better versus a reseller because the resellers are more likely to check eBay and uh, they would know that a game's supposed to go for $30 used instead of like, you know, $2. So you're not going to get a good deal from them, is the thing to look out for. I remember there was some controversy with that series a year or two ago, because other people started doing flea market stuff because of those videos, and uh, and Pat wasn't happy about that, because they were scooping up all the good deals that he usually went for. But I don't I don't think there was a huge controversy. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say it was maybe like a 2. It was briefly mentioned on the podcast, but that was about it, quite honestly. I like the design of that pink and yellow enemy we saw a minute ago. I wonder if that appears in the anime as well. It's, again, since I haven't seen it, I don't know what came from it and what was original to this game. Perhaps I should have done a little more research, don't you think? Uh, well, there goes my last life. Well, what to say now? We could continue. Ah, it starts us from over here. Well. I guess we'll give this a little more of an attempt. Oh, Well, never mind. After an embarrassing loss like that, you might as well just... just not.